All right, let's see how long it takes me to pack my base rig. Kind of in a hurry. Twenty-seven minutes and twenty-nine seconds. Not bad at all. Luckily, there's not much correlation between time packed and how well it opens. As long as you hit all the fundamentals, it doesn't really matter how neat you make the pack job. Sometimes the sloppiest ones open the best, truthfully. This morning, we jumped the superstitions, which are the mountain range behind me. And right now, I'm rushing to go paramotor down at the same spot we flew from last time. Phew! Fuck yes! So what I wanted to talk about today is my change in environment coming from New Jersey to flying out here in more treacherous terrain and why my primary glider selection is now somewhat irresponsible and dangerous. I'm speaking of the 14 meter free ride to comp that I so dearly love. It's an incredible glider, extreme performance. But I wanna talk about, I guess really four different things, why it's not really fit for this environment. up since pretty early so I need a little boost. Quick update on the house situation. Uh, there really is no update since the last video. I'm still waiting for the requests we made after the inspection to be fulfilled. Just three minor things like the washer wasn't working and I'm still just waiting on paperwork for the mortgage and stuff so no real updates. Closing is in about two weeks. Today I bought a brand new Mac Studio M2 Ultra because I'm gonna make like a new studio uh, office space, which I'm pretty stoked on. But yeah, that's the update. I'm sitting here in front of a sketchy Circle K. I'm just waiting to hear from a friend of mine, BB. BB is a badass skydiver, base jumper, a lot of air sports things, uh, but I guess she hasn't paramotored in a while and uh, she's using a borrowed wing. So I'm here to help if I'm needed. Here goes BB. Recurrency flight. This way, this way, this way. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Yes, yes, yes! Woo! That was incredible! He hasn't flown in maybe a year and just crushed a perfect zero win inflation. I'm gonna get clipped it and go up. What an absolute savage. She was super nervous and maybe overthinking it a little bit, but made it look super easy. <laughs> okay, so the whole point of uh, this video, what I wanted to talk about was how changing environments coming out here to Arizona, um, this glider right here, it's good for this type of flight being local, but there's four reasons why this glider, the 14 meter free ride to comp, which is an extremely high performance slalom glider, is no longer a smart choice for a lot of the flights out here. The first reason is density altitude. And although this location is only like 2000 foot um, MSL, it still it makes a little difference. It makes the engine run a little bit less uh, well. It makes the glider make a little bit less lift. It really becomes a bigger factor when you're up at like five and 6,000 uh, density altitudes. But there's a slight difference here that makes having a larger, uh, more efficient glider better. That's probably the least of my four concerns. Number two, is if I have a motor out on a lot of these flights, and not this flight particularly, but I'll insert clips of more recent flights. If I have a motor out, which is something that happens uh, kind of common on paramotors, this 14 free ride comp, I'm gonna come in barreling fast. And there's a lot of terrain out here that is um, very rocky and filled with cactuses. And that's always in the back of my mind on this glider flying in unforgiving sights, is that inevitably when a motor out happens, 
this thing is not going to be the easiest to land in uh, sketchy terrain. The third thing is turbulence. I'll insert, insert clips of me flying by big mountains. But when you're flying in big mountains, a lot of like East Coast and Florida pilots don't really realize out there in those hilly environments, you experience rotor and mild turbulence. But it's a different world when you're out here flying by big mountains. The turbulence can get insane. And you can round a corner, be flying in smooth air, you round that corner, and now all of a sudden your wing collapses. And something smaller like this is going to be way more spicy when it inevitably collapses. And it's not going to recover as well. I'll finish my little monologue here with the fourth point and then we'll just go have some fun. The fourth thing is fuel efficiency. On a lot of the flights out here, uh, out west, you're launching from a place like this, but then you want to go fly in the mountains, which are way over there, or the copper mine, which is 10 miles that way. And this 14 free ride sucks gas. I'm like riding almost into the power band just to stay level. And then any bit of climb, I'm in the power band and it's just sucking fuel. It'll burn uh, about seven liters an hour just flying casually. And so many times, twice now, I've been flying flights in this environment where we go on like an hour long cross country and I get way out far away from home and I look at my gas level and I'm down to like three liters and I'm like, I gotta turn around and come home before I run out of gas. So to recap, number one, the density altitude making the glider less efficient. Number two, the factor of potential motor routes and hazardous terrain. Number three, turbulence and collapses. And number four, the fuel efficiency. That is why on a lot of the adventure flights out here, you'll likely see me flying that uh, neon green uh, Viper XC 16 meter that I just got. Okay, let's just go have some fun. It's almost sunset anyway. She says, this is a turd. Nice and steady. Dude, I hate this thing. <laughs> Talking shit. Where is horrible. <laughs> like a fairy. You savage. All right, so since the start of this video, a few things have happened. I finally got full approval on the loan. Uh, we're cleared to close. And with that information, I jumped in a plane and flew home, as you can see. I'm in the process of packing everything up in the house. It's kind of a mess right now. It's kind of bittersweet. This house, this is my first house and it's, it's had a lot of memories. A lot of good times. Look at the echo in here. My bedroom is completely empty. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to end this video with that update. That's where I'm at. I'm emptying the house. Got a box truck outside towing the Mercedes. It's gonna take three days. My cat is gonna be pissed riding shotgun in a little crate. Um, but yeah, I guess the next update is gonna be back in Arizona kind of setting up the house um, and hopefully flying again. So appreciate your guys' support. I guess till the next one, have fun, fly safe. Peace.